Hey everyone, Dave here. Welcome to a new Rage Shadow Legends video. Today we're talking about Eternal Dragon, the final boss on this rotation of Doom Tower Hard. Uh, and I have a much older video talking about Eternal Dragon and how to beat it with a budget team. The budget team that I have, and probably will show it again today, though I might not leave it for the whole run, is Brogni in the lead. He was a much older fusion, replaceable with other champs. We'll talk about options here. Uh, Vrask. Cell of the Drakes, Drixar, and Vogoth, uh, which is basically, uh, well, well, let's jump into it. We'll talk about Eternal Dragon, what's special about the boss, and why do we need a special kind of team to handle it. So, boss guide, I won't read through all the skills, I'll just tell you about a couple of very specific points uh, that's leading our choice of which champs Will help you beat that specific boss so that boss do two important things to your team it starts with this skill which is basically uh, putting block active skills for one turn on all of your champs though they can only do your a1s unless they are cleansed or if they have blocked the buffs up uh, before the boss starts with that skill that's what he starts with then during i won't go through the the complex mechanics of the boss he spends three minions one of them when the, the boss consumes him uh, will basically get back to that skill which will put this is like uh, a warlord skill it will put all of your skills for the whole team on uh, cooldown uh, so he, he, he does that skill anyways and then when he consumes that minion he does it again so why are these two the major ones there then the other minions will heal him or whatever uh, I'll tell you now because the thing is if you notice my team here forget about my team we'll change it to the budget one let, let me actually do this right now because I'll show you like the higher option of the teams but I want to show you the budget ones that we started working working with so if I can ever find them Where's my champs? Okay, Cell of the Drakes. And Drixar. That's why I'm calling it a budget team. Uh, it's in the older video. The video is much older. So probably the edit and my style of like recording wasn't as advanced as it is today. Well, I hope this is advanced. <laughs> We're still learning a lot. So. And we had Vrask and... Actually, I didn't have Vogoth, I had Jarek, so, um, yeah, I remain corrected there. So, I'll let that team run till it gets to the boss, and then I'll tell you what it's about. Of course, I removed the AI because now I'm using a different team, but I'll stop it and tell you what's happening there. So, because that boss puts block active skills on you and puts your skill on, uh, on cooldown, your choice for the team to beat this boss should be depending on either an A1 that's very useful on in beating the boss and of course having War Master on all of the champs to make sure you're chipping at the boss's health. Second thing is that on passive skills because passive skills won't be put on, on uh, cooldown and probably from if you're seeing the team here that's exactly what you were doing with that budget team. So I should have disabled uh, Brogni's a3 here but let it run and i'll disable it later because what what does that team dep depend on brogni is faster than the boss so the first thing he will do he will put block the buffs on the team before the boss takes that first um, block skills block active skills hit and then after this i want everyone to do their skill their a1 skills because that's where they are bringing value so drakes are will just do A1 and his passive will start burning the boss and his minions. Uh, Jareg, I want him to do A1 so that he can put attack down on the boss. This boss hits, hits really hard. So you want someone who puts attack down on him and Jareg is perfect for that. The other part of Jareg's kit that's really useful is that once anyone from your team drops below a certain HP percent, 50% is it? I don't remember. He will put continuous heals on them. Uh, Cell of the Drakes will apply uh, 
speed down on the boss, decrease speed, and she will also heal everybody. So you see here, Progni is faster than the boss. So we'll just apply this. Now when he hit us, oh, he put our skills on cooldown. I forgot about this. Anyway, same is still valid. We're protected from the debuffs uh, that they apply on us. And you see here, Drixar's passive procced and we have HP burn on the boss. And Jarek just procced that attack down. Let's see if Cell has enough accuracy to apply speed down. She doesn't. And then in this strategy, if you're just surviving and chipping on the boss's uh, health, then forget about the minions. They will heal the boss or whatever, but you just keep hitting him. This team is tanky enough to do this. Leave the boss to do whatever he wants. Don't put stuns on them. Don't do anything. Just focus on the boss to get him down. Maybe I can just try to provoke with Drixar to prevent them from doing nasty stuff before we get our block debuffs back up. But you see here, everybody got block um, active skills now, which is okay. This team is tanky. I've shown Vrosk's build in a separate video because of how useful he is elsewhere. You see here, like she's hitting that minion, but the passive is proccing anyway. And my cell is in... Um, Relentless, which is great on her. Uh, go check that video. I have a separate videos for Cell and Vrask, two great champs. Um, so other than the guaranteed champs, the others are non-void epics, so you will get them anyway. You see here, we're almost, we're doing uh, good chunks of damage to the boss's health. And the passives from Vrask and Cell of the Drakes is keeping are keeping everyone healthy here. So we are an, at no risk, and as you can see, we're chipping as the boss's health. Uh, Jarek will keep applying O. So we miss the attack down. So that's a risk that the boss will hit us hard. But my team is tanky enough to handle it. And you'll just keep doing this till you get it done. Uh, of course, you can get, like you see here, the team is getting low, but that's totally fine. Things that I want to disable. I want to disable Jarek's ally protect if you're doing this because he will take a lot of damage and die. I want to disable uh, cells also um, revive because uh, that will make her also weak because of the ally protect. You notice here when he starts counting those buffs, he hits harder, but my team is tanky enough. My Vrask is also in relentless, so he'll keep taking turns and everybody's back to full health. And the only ones that I have with enough resistance, which is the second strategy, I'll tell you about it in a sec. You see here, everybody's skills uh, are in cooldown except for Brogni, because I have him with enough resistance to resist this. The resistance requirement for the final boss on Doom Tower Hard is very high. So if you have the, enough le the level of gear to give them enough stats, accuracy, resistance, HP, and defense, yeah, go ahead and do that. But my strategy is depending on having one champ with enough resistance and the other ones, they are just there for the ride depending on their A1s and their passive. You see here, we already got the boss to like almost, what, two-thirds down? And this team will just take him down. Um, if your gear level is not that high, it's totally fine because you can try till you get lucky. Let's say that your accuracy level, like you missed an attack down like I just did with Sharek. And the team is not tanky enough, so the boss wipe them out with the next big hit. That's fine. Just take another try. Uh, this is this is just done once every three months when that rotation comes. So you can afford to just give it a few tries till you get it done. So first strategy here, you see here we took just a massive hit because we don't have a tag down, but now we have it back, and the team is strong enough. I just applied Brogni's shield. And the team is strong enough so that they will just heal from that. Lockdowns, I don't care. I'm doing his A1 anyway. I'm even disabling his A2 in the AI preset. And now he would hit me. He will take damage because of Brogni's uh, shield. He will take damage because of the HP burns from Drexar. And we're all good. I won't finish this run only for, for uh, one reason. I don't have enough keys and I want to show you the other strategies. So you see here, this is done, and the team is surviving it. Even if you lose one of them all the way towards the end, you should be fine. The rest of the team can just survive 
till that last piece is ticks. So, first strategy, have one champ who is like providing shields or who's a healer or who's a reviver, like your Duchess, your Pythion, your Brogni, with enough resistance to resist the boss. And we'll check the builds at the end of this video. Everyone else, you should bring in champs that are doing A1s or passives that are useful for the, for the boss. So Drixar's passive applies HP burns. Great, great champ. You'll get him guaranteed from the 3v3 bazaar. If you didn't yet, you have to. Jareg is an amazing champ in that spot because he applies attack down and he puts continuous heals uh, if the team drops below a certain percent. Vrask, I have a separate video on him. Great healer, OP healer. Just build him in Relentless if you can afford it. 100% crit rate, loads of HP and fast. That's it. Sale of the Drakes. Also, I have a dedicated video on her. A great healer, great reviver, great control champ with the CC. For the purpose of only that boss, but of course you won't change her gear only for this. Um, Relentless is perfect. Lots of HP, lots of defense, fast. If you can put accuracy on her for other areas, that's good. But she doesn't need it for that specific purpose. So that's the first strategy that we can have there. Of course, we're flipping back to this team, but I'll, to I'll tell you about this team. So also we have a tanky reviver healer with enough resistance to resist the boss. And then what you'll do, don't mind my OP champ. This can be, I don't know, Royal Guard or Cold Heart, enemy max HP champs. And then probably we'll also need uh, second support Brogni is just perfect for this someone to apply shields let's see if I can change him to someone more sort of budget well Elva's not budget let's say Hakon smash Lord. he doesn't apply shields but he did no I want someone with shields who applies shields Okay, I won't spend forever looking for someone. Let's say that you'll have a second support champ here. Let me bring my Aniri. And last spot, let's say, let's bring our Tanky. For those who don't have Krona, uh, sorry, uh, Ninja, because they were not there, let's use our Krona there. If you're using him for Sand Devil or for any other burn content, uh, that sort of strategy. So let's see. Again, the same strategy would be you, you need two healers, revivers. If both of them got enough support, uh, sorry, enough resistance to resist the bosses, uh, put skills on cooldown or active skill, that's great. Well, I only have Pythion with enough resistance here. If not, and he's in a uh, bolster set, which is great to support the team from these hits. The other enemy max HP champs or burn champs or whoever you'll bring in, their main, their main task would be to take the boss down fast enough before he, uh, before he just kills the whole team. So that's the enemy max BH uh, strategy. You don't need enough tankiness or healing as the previous team because the main thing is that we're taking the boss down fast enough. So you see here, of course, my Pythion and Bolster is too slow for the boss, but he has enough resistance. You see here, everybody's skills are in cooldown except him. Again, so that's one of the other things. My nukers here, they are both uh, in Relentless, which is great because Relentless here, even when the boss puts their uh, uh, skills on cooldown, they will just take a few turns even if you have to take a few tries to do it, but they will take a few turns and simply get uh, get back to their enemy max HP skills. Like you see here, my Acrisia just took a couple of turns and just got back to her skills. Here, Brimstone, Brimstone on any champ is good. I have it on my Chronam, a four star, so that will help chip at the boss's health. You see here, now we'll see a chunk because of the brimstone. Is it on two turns? Okay, anyway. Anir is keeping the team healthy. And Pythion will bring them up if they fall. So that's the whole uh, good thing about support. 
if the team is tanky enough, you can bring someone to apply like a decreased defense or weaken um, because that will help you do more damage to the boss fast enough. You see here now he's putting my skills back on school down, on cooldown, uh, cool, not school, and uh, Brimstone starts chipping at his health. You see here that's a very squishy team, but still we're getting back to uh, chipping at the boss. Probably Newt will never get a chance to do his skills because uh, he will keep getting put them on cooldown unless he gets a couple of oh okay so everybody's de dead except my Python that's okay that's exactly why he's here let's see if they'll die again now Acrisia is doing this so you see here without attack down which I don't have in this team. When the boss starts keeping those buffs on, probably he will start killing everyone. I'm not even sure I can finish this run. Probably I need more support instead of my uh, Cronam, who's not doing much other than Brimstone. You see here, Applied Brimstone again. Okay. Can my Aniri bring back Pythion? Let's see. Probably not. Oh, oh, oh. I think this... So I was showing you the strategy, and it's good that the strategy fails sometimes. So that last run failed, um, and my laptop as well, <laughs> by the end of it, which is good. So we can see what, what we need to build the team. So we're back a few hours later to wrap up this. I think the error I've done there, well, we have two problems with the team. We didn't have enough support, that's why Brogni is so OP. Brogni is a shield, so what do you need to support your squishier nukers? Uh, many max HP nukers while they're trying to take the boss down you'll need massive shields and a lie protect which is what we have within this team uh, that's why Brogni is so OP to be honest uh, the other thing is that you have to try this a few times because you will be depending on your enemy max HP champs Newt and Acrisia in my instance getting enough um, relentless procs so that they will get back to their skills after the cooldown and they take down the boss. It will take a few tries, but if this is your only way to beat the boss, then that's it. The safer way I've, I've shown in the beginning will work as well, it just takes a bit longer. The exception to that rule of like having to take so many relentless turns would be Acrisia, of course, avoid Lego, and the other one would be, but he's not anyway built near what he should for such an encounter, I'll just show it to you theoretically, is of course our one and only Armiger. Why Armiger can help here with enough support, because you have to keep them uh, keep him alive, is that uh, his enemy max HP is only on two turns cooldown. So the boss will put their uh, skills on cooldown, uh, and then when it comes to Armiger, he will just take an A1 and gets back to it. He, if he if he's in, even in relentless, he'll take so many turns. He can take a good chunk out of the boss's term, uh, this health. Sorry. So, Armiger is an option here, which brings me to the last strategy that I will show you. Then we'll talk which ones are practical if your gear level is limited. The strategy I'm talking about is simply a reset strategy. That's hard to make work because. Like probably if you have one of the famous reset champs, so only three would work in my opinion, Kaimara and Yumiko, of course, and then Renegade to a lesser degree. But you'll need to build your reset champ with enough resistance to resist the boss's uh, skill on cooldown. And you want him to go first after the boss take taking his turn. How would that work? The team will go into the battle, and then the boss will put their skills on cooldown. Then Kaimer will come and reset it. You have all of your skills back. You can apply your enemy max HP from Acrisia, from Newt or whoever. And then uh, by the time, and of course you'll need strong support in this example, uh, so that when the boss, boss again puts your skills on cooldown, you'll just heal and reset and do all of that stuff to beat him. So that's the third strategy there. Why I'm saying it's not easy because like I only have one Kaimer and he's not built for this. 
If you have two, maybe you'll build the second one with high resistance, even for go second team arenas and that stuff. But like I said, if you have one reset champ, you won't have him dedicated for this. But it's worth it if you want to be the final boss in Dune Tamar Heart, just to regear him. It will cost you, what, 500k or whatever, and that you'll do that once, once to beat the boss. So that's that. I'm recording this in the morning. So uh, that's the oh. three strategies there. If we talk about which one is the more budget one, the more accessible one to player with lower levels of gear, I would say the one I've, uh, I've shown all the way in the beginning and in the older videos as, uh, as well. So let me remove my other ones just to refresh your memory or you can go back in the video there. So Progni is the only one like with the shield set who applies shield. Uh, and we can check who else can fit into that role. So we have Sail of the Drakes, we have Drixar, and then our two Epics, Jurek and um, probably Vrask, and probably Jurek is in the vault, so let's get him out. Okay, so this is, and we'll get Jarek out of the vault because we'll need to check his gear after this. This is a budget option, accessible, two guaranteed champs, well, an older fusion, but yeah, and then two non-void epics. What we'll do next is that we'll check the gear on the champs that we've shown, um, and then we'll go to El Hades website to just look quickly and what options we can, other, we can use other than these. So... Let's go check the gear. And like I said, probably I'll need to get your egg out of the vault. Okay. So now let's see who we used here. Of course, Python. My Python is in bolster set. What you need on him basically, because if he's protecting the team, lots of HP. Mine is super slow. You might want him a little bit faster because he won't take enough turns, which is probably one of the reasons that uh, run failed. You want him to be around 180, 190 at least. But yeah, as much as HP and defense as you can give him, and at least a, more than 400 resistance to resist the boss. So that's what you need on such a support champ. Uh, so that's the first one. My Brogni is still in my best shield set for this because I was only using him for the waves for the seer com before I got the Duchess. So you see, for a shield set, massive HP. Um, yeah, speed. I found that 256 barely works, but if you can make him a little bit faster over 260, that would work too. 500 resistance. Well, anything above 400 with a resistance aura might work. But it, it might fail occasionally. So, yeah. that's And we'll also check on a lady's website the exact resistance needed for this. And then he doesn't need anything else. If you can have these stats on him and you can also add some attack and crit rate, that will help him increase the shield. Uh, my note, I've shown him in a dedicated video. Go watch it out. And Relentless, um, yeah. Go watch the dedicated video. It will give you a better view into how I'm gearing note and why. Same for Cell, also I have a dedicated video on her, so that Cell build is not difficult at all. Uh, the Relentless part might be difficult if you didn't win enough uh, tournaments, but the level of stats is not um, too high or anything. And then the last one I think is... Oh, we didn't show Vrask and Jurek, and then we'll go back uh, to check who else. So... Jarek, I've put him on Stalwart because uh, just to decrease the damage he's taking. Very important not to use his ally protect. We're depending on his A1 and passive here. Uh, so if you can give him more HP and more uh, defense, that would be better. Speed is okay-ish. I gave him some resistance, but still, he's getting reset anyway. So you might just ignore it if you're only using him for this. And you might want to give him accuracy more, a little bit more, like let's say 400 so you, you've seen that he's getting resist, resisted every now and then. And you can also, if you have your 
Brogni or whoever is is uh, resisting that skill reset. Uh, in enough resistance, you can use Drixar's uh, accuracy aura to help you with the with the accuracy a little bit. So this is my Drixar. Haven't changed his gear because probably I stopped using him the same way. Works great almost everywhere. You can make him a little bit faster if you can. Um, like I said, I was trying to make the whole team resist that skill uh, reset, but it didn't work. So you might keep it this way for the Doom Tower hard waves or reset it. Um, accuracy, I would say he needs 350, but he works, so I didn't change it. Um, and yeah, Drixar is great, just tanky. I've put him in lifesteal because he does hit hard. So when he hits, he will regain some of his health. Uh, yeah, great, great champ works almost everywhere. Who else do we want to show? I think that's Vrask also. I have a dedicated video on Vrask. Go check it out. So yeah, that's the team basically in a nutshell. Let's go quickly to El Hades website and check a couple of other options. So we are on El Hades website. The first place I want to visit is the raid stages tool from here yeah it's visible so what we're doing we're going to doom tower hard rotation three is it I guess we'll see now what oh okay we have the floors So we want final boss heart. No, so that's so we need rotation two then. Yes, this is the right one. Yep, this is the right one. Okay, so you see here uh, he's two fifty. So any speed above two fifty will help if you want to put that. Uh, block the buffs before he takes a turn his accuracy is 350 so you see here even it's written on the website i hope it's visible you need 455 if you want to guarantee that you won't get debuffed any number above 400 will work a little bit but yeah if you if you want to be sure either get your your champs to 455 or use a resistance aura from pythion or brogni so that's that. Let's go back to home because like the other champs, like I've already chosen the budget one to show you. It's very difficult to find someone else with the same complex kits that will help everywhere. The heals from the passive or the A1, the attack down and all of that. So these are the bit, best options from seeing so many videos um, and strategies. But the only thing that I'm looking for now to replace is Brogni because I know a lot of you might not have Brogni. So what we're looking for, we're looking for shield. Apply shield. Is shield actually a buff? Okay. And I'm showing you how to look up things in Hilladies as well, if you don't know that. So, yep. Shield buffs. And of course, we want a shield buff on the whole team. So you see our options here. Mostly Legos, unfortunately. I think that Archbishop Penthroy can apply a good shield to help you there, and Light Protect would help massively there if you have, like, of course, Grazor or Kresk, uh, Borogar, Blind Seer, Helior, of course, Helicath. If you've been playing uh, when Helicath was out, he's a great champ, block damage, and he, he applies a, an excellent shield to protect the team, so Helicath might be a good option there. Probably King Galkobar, I haven't worked with that guy so i don't know marishka yeah <laughs> if you have a real user mithrala can be a great option there which we're just talking about the shield bit here valk yep valk yes of course valk um i'm looking for the ones that i think that will work better here if we look into the epics like you have milga maybe you have borangiri but the thing is the shields and how they work from the epics, probably it won't be strong enough. So no, and we're now we're getting into um, like a conditional and that stuff. So let me, let's say, if you don't have Brogni, 
Brogni is the best in my opinion because he applies the shield and he applies the block debuffs. Awesome, awesome champ and increased defense. So yeah, Brogni is the best in my opinion. If you don't have Brogni, of course, if you have Blind Seer, Marishka, Chris, or Grazor, of course, you'll use them. Um, Archbishop Penthroy, uh, Borogar, maybe Drakol will work, but yeah, Helior and Helicast. So these are the ones that I would suggest. Sigmund, oh, Sigmund's a high shield, yeah, from his name. And Mithrala, of course. Probably everybody has Mithrala, so... And Mithrala also cleanses, so... Actually, actually, Mithrala's a great option there. Uh, probably I should have thought for her to for this showcase, because the thing is, Mithrala, she combines her accuracy with her resistance, so probably she will not get debuffed by the boss. So she can cleanse the team, she can apply the shields, she can apply increased defense and increase attack. So Mithrala is a great, great option there, and she has her accuracy aura. So yeah, probably I missed to showcase Mithrala in that team comp, but she would be excellent there. Is she better than Progni? Uh, variable to say, like I'm not sure, but yeah, but she's a great option as well. Like maybe you'll have her with Pythion, um, and then Celestia Drakes, and a couple of other damage dealers by HP burn, like let's say Artac can also work if he gets back his skills. The important thing here is that the boss will keep putting your skills or cool, cool down. Cleanse won't help with this. It will help with the block active skills, but it won't help with the skills on cooldown. So that's why we still go back to these budget options. And what's so great about the budget teams that I'm showing that it's non void. Um, epics, and a couple of guaranteed champs. Anyways, that concludes it for today. I hope I helped you a little bit to beat the Eternal Dragon. Same strategy apply for lower floors and for normal as well, uh, but these are easier anyway. Um, if you liked the video, subscribe to the channel. We have more coming, and I'll see you next time. Bye.